Hi, and here is a quick tutorial about biodiversity and calculating the diversity of an area using Simpson's uh, index. Now, there's a couple different types of uh, formulas to calculate, so I'm going to push play on this tutorial, this slideshow, and we'll get started. All right, so before we get into it, what is diversity? Well, if you go into an area and you see um, a small area and you see just one or two species in there, obviously that means it has a low diversity. However, if you go into an area and you see many different kinds, and here's the key, many of each of those kinds of species, um, maybe 50 red ants, 60 black ants, 50 spiders, 70 snakes, sounds like Indiana Jones, doesn't it? A lot of each species, that is what diversity is referring to. So let's go through and do a couple examples. Uh, before I go any further, let's just quickly point out that there are several different ways to calculate Simpson's index. Uh, the IB in their syllabus for biology, they'll put this uh, equation here on the upper left, and this shows Simpson's reciprocal index. I personally prefer using Simpson's index of diversity in the upper right um, because the result will give you an answer between uh, zero and one, which is a lot easier to make sense of, in my opinion. All right, just do a quick Google search of the other. Um, ultimately, you are getting to uh, the bigger the number, the more diverse, the lower the number, the less diverse. The bo they're, they're both similar in that sense. Now, so D is diversity. N, let's quickly make sense of these variables. N talks about the total number of species that you're, uh, sorry, total number of everything that you will find in that area. So those snakes, those spiders, those red ants that I mentioned earlier, you count everything, that's your big N. Your little N, lowercase n, will refer to the number of each individual species. So how many red ants? That's one number that you'll keep. How many black ants? That's another little n that you'll keep. Now let's go through and do a quick example. So here's four, three different quadrats. A quadrat is just a square sample area. So one is filling up with little alien faces. Um, and then we have two others. The right is filling up with a lot of different types of faces. And the middle square, the middle quadrat is filling up with three different species. So you have the red, the purple, and the yellow with the shades on. Three different species, six of each of those species. All right, now let's go through and calculate one at a time. And you might want to pause here and try to just get a guesstimate on what you think is the least diverse and which is the most diverse based on the big N and the little n that we have in our equation. So let's move on here. We'll calculate the uh, one with all the alien faces first. So just going through the equation, you'll see that I have 36 alien faces. And so 36 times itself, another lowercase n, so 36 times 36 minus 1. I'll explain the minus 1 in a second. Then we go to the next face, and the next one, there are two yellow faces. So 2 times itself, 2 minus one. And then we go to the next face, the purple, which is one. One times itself minus one. Now, you might look at that last uh, part of the equation there, and you might say, well, one times one minus one, which is zero. So one times zero is zero, right? Perfect. You're correct. Um, this is why we see the minus one in the original equation at the top. The minus one is a bit of a fail-safe to say that if we find just one species out there in a, in a quadrat, um, we're assuming that that's uh, random and it won't count. Uh, it's it's some somewhat of just an oddity that came into our sample and is probably migrating or moving through. So we won't count it in this diversity sample. And that's the way that we erase that one. Let's go through the math now. Uh, by the way, the 39 was 39 total faces in there. So 39 times 39 minus 1. And we do the calculation and we end up with something like this. And don't forget to do the 1 minus. A lot of people forget that at the bottom. We have to still have that 1 minus at the beginning of the equation. And I end up with D equals 
0 0.15. Okay, so what? What does that tell me? Well, that's actually a probability. This is very low diversity, by the way. And probability says that if I were to pick two randomly out of this square, and I picked any two, well, there would be a 15% chance that I would pick different ones. Okay, sounds a little weird, but think about it in terms of the lower the number, the less diversity. And that's because one of these species dominates. You can see the alien phases really dominates, and there's not a lot of anything else. So that starts to maybe make sense. Let's go through one in the middle here. Now, I'll go through the math. We have six of each species, and we have 18 total species. So that's how we put it into our equation. And we do the math, and I just use some very simple calculator on the side of my computer here to do this. I hope I did it right. We'll see. Maybe someone will comment if it's wrong. And I end up with 0.71, which is 71% chance that if I were to pick any two of those, it'd be different. So that's pretty high diversity. Now let's go to the last one. And here we go. You can push pause and give this one a try if you'd like. Um, I'll go through the math now. And I found seven of one species, seven of another species, six of another species, six of another, and three of those aliens. Um, 29 total in there. And I go through and I calculate that out. And I subtract it from the original one. And I end up with 82. That's very high. That's a very high diversity. So 82% chance that they would be different if I picked any two. Now what you could end up doing is you could actually start to graph these. Um, maybe doing a transect away from human habitat and you lay down quadrats as you go down that transect and you could see how the biodiversity changes as you move away from a human habitat. That would be a nice, uh, very quick experiment you could do with really good results probably. And just to finish, we just quickly compare the different diversity uh, indexes here, indices here of these different examples. You see that zero is low, one is high, and maybe you can visualize what that might look like. All right, so we have a lot of different kinds and a lot of each kind in the highest number. I hope that helps someone, and send me a comment if you need any support with this. Hopefully I can help. Thanks.